<laughs> so uh, I was I was always the tallest in my class when I was growing up, and uh, being the tallest, there are certain responsibilities that come with that. Not just I had to like anchor the back row of all the class pictures standing in the back. Uh, you also have a responsibility to all the bullies at the school, and that they have to try to beat you up in order to prove themselves. It's kind of like how gangs today will go do knockout or kill somebody, but just on a lesser scale. Um, uh, I also had this little problem with, as the big guy, I had this little hero complex that whenever I saw somebody who was smaller than me who needed help, my blood would start pumping and I would go into hero mode. And so if somebody was getting beaten up, if somebody was getting bullied, I would feel I needed to go in and save them. Uh, the only problem is I didn't, I didn't actually have any of the skills <laughs> that, would, that would go with being a hero. <laughs> so I, I, I realized pretty soon that I was not very tough. Uh, but I still had this hero thing. And the hero thing has gone on to this day. I'm, uh, whether it's like doing volunteer work, whatever, I, you know, running down to Grand Zero, doing this, doing that, I always run in and I, I, I still step in and try and break up like bar fights. And it's, I'm an idiot. I can't, I, I don't know how to, I can barely throw a punch. So, uh, one of the things that I wound up doing is uh, uh, I wound up doing some volunteer work at this place called the Hole in the Wall Game Camp. It's uh, Paul Newman, uh, movie star, used to, the guy with all the salad dressings and everything, used to send all the money to this camp for kids. Yeah, well, Enough. some Fair people enough. know him for his movies. Some <laughs> movies. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I got everybody on the same table. Uh, so, you go and I spent 10 days up there and thought it was a great way for me to like, like get rid of my own ego because I had to go up and be a camp counselor and take care of these kids who were amazing, who like are dealing with like cancer and sickle cell and HIV and all this stuff. And uh, and I was feeling you know pretty good about myself, you know, hero doing something he actually could do. Uh, and then I woke up one morning and and realized I'd been bitten by something uh, up up in the uh, in, in one of the um. one of the cabins. So, <laughs> so I, I dealt with it, you know, and I had a little calamine lotion or something. I said, I got bit by something, whatever. I got home uh, to New York. This was up in the middle of Connecticut. And uh, I woke up the next morning and I was like, oh, what the hell is that thing? Morning. I, uh, hopefully, there, there, no one's serving food here, so yeah. just deal with the fact that this might not be... This might get a little nasty. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm dealing with it. I'm fine. It'll go away. And I wake up the next morning, and they've multiplied. Oh, thank you. So, so immediately, I'm thinking, number one fear, I have bed bugs. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. That's my reaction. Uh, uh, it wasn't bed bugs. Like, I, ch I went through and everything, and, like, checked the mattress. No bed bugs. It didn't match up with bed bugs. Uh, second biggest fear, I uh, hadn't had it, but was this crabs? Uh, also a fear. Uh, and I realized it was neither of these, uh, even though I did the whole rid thing to try and get rid of the crabs. They didn't go away because they weren't crabs. Uh, so eventually I realized these are not going away. They're like little mosquito bites. So I go to, uh, I don't have any insurance at this point, so I go to a, a health clinic down in, uh, down in Hell's Kitchen, and I wait for like three hours because I don't have an appointment, and uh, they can't see me. Mm. And, uh, and I'm like, wow, this really hurts. <laughs> they said, no, you'll have to go to the ER. So I don't have insurance. So I go to the ER and get whatever student walks in to deal with the, the non-stabbings. Uh, and he takes a magic marker and he draws around them and he says, if these get any bigger, come back and see us. Uh, so I, pay, I had to pay like 500 bucks for that visit. Uh, so and I'm, I wake up the next morning and they got bigger. Uh, so eventually I start to realize, and I'm, I'm, I'm an actor, so I'm going to rehearsals and I'm trying to do different things. I start to realize, if I stand still, it starts to feel like there's a blowtorch. Like, uh, and, and the worst one, the worst one was down here uh, uh, on my calf, okay? And I realize, if I'm walking, no problem. If I'm sitting, no problem. 
If I'm, uh, if I'm, whatever, it's lying down, no problem. But if I stand, it's a blowtorch. Like, it's the worst pain I've ever been in in my life. Uh, you realize this if you ever, uh, as men do, want to pee standing up. Because you don't finish the pee by the time, and, and the fire starts, so you, yeah. Uh, so I finally had to bite the bullet, and I had to go see a real doctor and pay for a real doctor. And this doctor goes all out, and he gives me pain shots and everything. And he, first question is, uh, you had any contact with the NFL? What? <laughs> No, no. Uh, how about the California penal system? What? The prison system. Like, no, no. Sorry. He goes, okay, because this looks like this is a, uh, 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 a brand new strain of resistant staph infection oh. that is only found in the NFL and in the California penal system. Yes. So all of this from what I believed was a spider bite up doing volunteer work. And... Uh, so he, you know, he goes ahead and he, you know, gives me anesthetic, and then by this point, here's a here's the fun part. By this point, uh, I realize I have like a, a a floating hard disc about this big, and of course it hurts like hell. But I'm fascinated, so so I'm realizing I'm like it literally, it literally is like a giant. <laughs> Like the size of a giant chocolate chip cookie, like just right about there. And he had to, it was something else, I would have said, but chocolate chip cookie was the least defensive way to be. So he gives me a couple of shots, slices my leg open, and shoves gauze in there and says, You're going to have to leave this open in order to drain it. So I've mentioned previously, I'm not a tough guy. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm having to change the dressing oh. myself. Oh. Uh, and they said, come back on Monday. This was like a Friday. Come back oh on or Thursday. Oh. Come back Monday. We'll have the test results and we'll be able to take exactly what it is and give you the drugs for it. So I come back on Monday. And uh, uh, in like ridiculous amounts of pain. To stand and wait for the receptionist. I'm in incredible pain. Like, I want to lie down or sit down. Like, I can't stand if I stand pain. Uh, she says, all right, so the doctor wants to see you, but he doesn't have the results back. And I said, no, fuck you. I'm not going. I don't have any money. I have no, I volunteered. And I got this from volunteering, and now I'm spending all this money to cure myself of something that I got from doing a good deed. And, and she said, well, the doctor really needs to see it. And I said, I can't pay you. You said you would have the results. I can pay when you have the results. I'll come back. She says, no, the doctor said he'll see you for free. Aww. Okay. Yeah. So, so I go in. I go in. I see the doctor. And the doctor says, all right, uh, I'm going to have to change this. He says, after he looks at it, he says, now, uh, so I am going to have to give you a shot. And I said, I'm in so much pain right now, I don't care that I don't have a shot. You don't know what pain I've been in over this entire weekend. Like, I was immobilized. It was the worst pain of my life. It was like childbirth in my calf. <laughs> and and yes. so, so he said, this is going to hurt like hell. I said, I don't care. Yeah. I'm in so much pain right now. There's nothing you can do <laughs> that will cause me more pain than I've had this weekend. So... He says, "You all right, but you can't move your leg." Whoa. So, I'm I ball up my fist and I reach into my bag and I took two pencils out of my bag and I'm biting on the pencils and I'm holding on like this and I'm doing everything I can not to move my leg. Uh, well, I'm calling him a liar because he said he said he, it wouldn't it wouldn't cost me anything and now we're going pain free. He has to take this out of the inside of my body and stuff this rough gauze and fill this cavity that's in my leg. So I'm literally biting down on the pencils, I'm holding on like this, and he proceeds to push down into my leg. And I'm going, I'm like, it doesn't matter. It's hurt like this all weekend. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, he obviously hit something. <laughs> and 
I, but I'm pretty sure, I, I mean, I, I don't have nails, but I'm pretty sure I punctured my palms. And, um, and I hit a point, people talk about your pain threshold, and I hit a point where me mechanically that came into my head and I realized I can visualize my pain threshold wow. right now. And I was in so much pain and I was like, it, my body started to say, okay, you've reached the point where you can't take this anymore, so we're going to shut down. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're in a lot of pain, you pass out, right? Uh. So I'm there doing, all the, doing this, going through this incredible pain, and as he's shoving <laughs> gauze into my leg, I came to the realization that, I, I don't know how I saw it, but I visualized it like, like red going up a thermometer or like something like this. Yeah. And I realized I'm there. And uh, I, somehow my mind separated me from my body. And I had this moment of, oh shit, I'm looking down on myself. You know, and I'm thinking, but that would mean I'm dead. And I'm not doing anything that could cause me to be dead. But mentally, <clears throat> My mind removed me from the situation because it was too much pain for me to deal with. Okay? And luckily he finished just then. And I kind of went, Shh. and my mind said, okay, it's safe to come back. Um, and to literally reach a point where you knew how much pain your body could take. As I limped out of that office, I said, okay, maybe I'm tougher than I think. <laughs> <laughs>